Representative volume elements of textile composites can be quite challenging to develop. This is mainly due to the complex yarn topologies for such composites. In this video, I will show you the detailed steps to creating such RVE, beginning with a sketch of the binder yarn path, to the design of the weft and warp yarns, then the design of the metrics and the eventual creation of the distinctive RVE of the 3D orthogonal composite. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. So the kind of virtual domain we'll expect to get from this would be this type of virtual domain. And this is the 3D orthogonal composite. And we can clearly identify this part as the binder. Then this is the warped yarn. And then the other one is the warp yarn. So, and of course, this part is the matrix. So that's what we're going to get. So just to look a little bit more in detail, what we, what is the configuration of the binder? So the first thing we're going to do is to sketch the binder. So it's going to have a configuration that looks like this. So this is a classic shape of it, a 3D orthogonal, the orthogonal shape. And so these are the dimensions that we're going to be using later on in the design. So the cross section of the yarn that we're using is going to be an elliptical yarn. Now, by the time we assemble it, we're going to have four of these binder yarns and in order to for the system to be intact. So the binder yarns have to be inverted. So you got this first one. This has to be inverted the other one because the essence of this is to hold the system in place so that it stays intact. Let's now go into Abacus and begin this modeling. If you really like this kind of content that I'm presenting here, please, I do encourage you to sign up to this channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Okay, here we are in Abacus. So the first thing we're going to do is to create the yarn. So we're going to create parts. So I'm going to call just the yarn. And we're going to use the extrusion method for that. So we're going to move into this position. So we're going to start from zero, zero there. So there is this spline function. So we click on the spline function. So I'll just need to take here one two three and then keep going so this is the first 10 millimeters and i'll jump and get here so this is 15 millimeters and then i'll jump and get here so that's another 15 millimeters and then i jump and get back here then another 15 millimeters and jump get back here and do the last 10. so at the end where i click and click done so this represents our yarn right click cancel this procedure and click done now click enter so we're going to sketch the yarn profile the yarn cross section so it starts from zero zero and on the x-axis will be 1.54 and zero because this is a minor axis and then this axis will be zero and three which is the major axis so I right click and then click done so this represents our yarn so perfect so I'll quickly switch to the assembly module and create an instance of that yarn so then we now need to invert this, create a pattern of this yarn. So we'll select this. Okay. So basically I'll take one off. Now I need to move it towards the Z axis and the distance apart is 24 as we indicated at the beginning. So this is fine. Now we need to rotate this vertically. So I'll use the rotate button, select the one I want to rotate and then I'll rotate it about this point. So I'll select here and then I'll switch it around. And select that point and I want to rotate it by 180 degrees okay excellent so we've got it looking sort of the way we want but not exactly so what we then need to do is that we need to move it from the position where it is to another position so that it can line up with this so what we first need to find out is what is this point so what is the value of this point click done so we see it's zero zero and what is the value of that point done so that is 0024 so where we're going to move it is from this 0024 down so i'll select this system okay and i'll start off with the origin where it is so i'll paste that here click enter and then where it needs to finish however we know that the y-axis the, the height of this is 35 so this will be minus 35 okay so once we do this then we have it oriented properly okay so it's looking like we would expect so the next thing is just to create for that pattern of these two so i'll select those two and obviously i need to take away this i need to move this towards the z-axis and then i want the separation to be 48 because it's actually 24 24 24 apart okay so in the end we have a system that looks like this with 24 24 24 apart making up 72 in the hole. So that's basically the binder. So we're going to assemble that. So I'm going to call it the binder bundle. 
I'll return all the intersections and then I'll select that. Fine. So that's the binder bundle done. Now, what about the weft configuration, which is the other one? So again, it will have the same yarn geometry because it's the same kind of fiber system that we're using. And it will have an overall length of 72 millimeters in length, and it will essentially be extruded in this form. So there is no contortions to this weft. So a similar thing, by the time we look more closely on that weft. So remember, the weft is this part that is a blue in color, and this is how it's going to be distributed across the bulk. So where the green is the binder, the blue is the weft, and the kind of brownish color here is the warp which we'll talk about soon so this is a configuration of how it's going to be so i've kind of designed it and come up with this special distribution to kind of define the spacing apart both in the vertical and the horizontal direction these numbers are going to be de depending on the volume fraction that you're going to work with so you can reduce those numbers to create a more um, higher volume fraction system but this is kind of the system that we're working with let's now go into abacus and begin this modeling so we'll go back to the part menu. So what I'm going to have now is I'm going to create the weft and this will be created by extrusion. So the cross section of this would be 00, zero elliptical and 30 on this axis and 01.54 on this other axis. So that's the ellipse, elliptical cross section and click done. So the depth is 72, that's what we want with that. Now we'll bring that into the assembly module. So if you look at what's happening with the assembly module, so we, we basically stay in this window, take our perspective. So that's what we have. So if we now create an instance, which is the web. Okay. Okay. So this is the view that we want. So basically if I turn off the part instances, so you can see that everything here is a binder. So first thing we need to do is to move the system down. So again, we'll just make sure we understand what this point is. So this point here is basically 00072. Okay. So I'll copy that. Now what I want to do is I want to move that system from where it is and according to this design it has to be downwards by a distance of 4 so minus 4 so that gives us the binder moving into that position now the next thing is basically we need to pattern that so in order to pattern it so what we want is a distance of 8 here okay so that's the first case then we'll do the same for here so in order to pattern this again we want a distance of 14 there so that moves it into that position and then we we'll pattern again this bit so again a distance will be a distance of 11 so that gets it into that position according to again the design so we we'll do the same for here we we'll pattern this a distance of 14 as well and then finally we we'll pattern that and we get a distance of 8 Okay, so that's the first row of the system. So then the next thing we now need to do is to duplicate that so that we have it in vertical distances of eight. So again, our pattern, so I'll press down shift and select every of that bit. Okay, so that's done. Now I take this off. We need to change the direction of action to the Y axis and we flip it around. And this distance has to be a distance of eight. Okay, so that, that looks right and then we basically need to keep going okay so we've got all that rules for that system all done okay so if we then look at it in 3d so you can see it is looking sort of about right so what we're going to then do here is if we go back to the instances so i could say okay i want to now create the weft bundle okay now with the weft bundle i need to select all the wefts in the system so i press down shift and select all of them and click OK. So now we have all the weft selected and becomes one system with. So similarly to the warp as well. So the warp will have the same yarn cross section, the same length, and in terms of distribution. So this is how kind of how it's going to be distributed um, in space, and we would have those as the numbers in effect horizontally and vertically as well. So these are the sort of numbers that we're going to be using in this design in creating this virtual domain let's now go into abacus and begin this modeling so we'll go back and create the warp system it's going to be extruded as well the cross section is elliptical with three zero on the x-axis and zero one point five four on the y-axis okay right click and then so that gives us and it's going to be a depth of 55 so we'll go back to the assembly module and then bring that particular warp into the system okay so so I'll take our perspective. 
so you say okay this is actually not the direction it should be acting so we're going to rotate it so that it will be acting in a different direction so i'll select that and i'm going to rotate about the y-axis and 90 degrees okay so now we have it in the way it should be so so what we then want is the yz axis okay so this is the yz axis that we're looking for so the next thing we now need to do is we need to translate this thing into this position so what do we do so again we could say okay i'm going to pattern this okay so if i pattern it so i clearly don't want it so i'll take this off i want this acting in the z axis okay and the distance is eight okay then we'll flip it around all right so that's the first positioning that we want the system to be okay for the first instance so we clearly wouldn't want to have this there so i can just delete the warp and then leave him back the first instance so we can go and go ahead and pattern this as well so like we did before so i'll take this off so this will be a distance of eight it will be acting in the z axis so we'll go ahead and pattern this other one okay so again we'll take that off and that will be in the z direction and it's a distance of 14 so 16 okay so it moves into that position and becomes 16. so we'll go ahead and do the same again so okay so basically we've got this binder looking the way it's supposed to be so the final thing is to basically duplicate that as required so i'm going to pattern this uh, select that press down shift pick them individually okay so we've got that now we just need to duplicate it as we want so click done now i don't want it in this axis i clearly want it in the z axis and the distance apart is eight so i'll flip this around okay so that's the first one the second one the third one and the last one goes into that position okay so we've got that and then we can see what we have here okay so in order to create the binder so basically we'll click on that and then that's okay this will be the warp bundle okay and then within the warp bundle we need to select only the warp alone so we start from here and then press down shift get to the end so that's that warp the binder and all that are in place and then click ok so we've got the system looking as we expect it to be so we've got all the three bundles created so the le next thing we need to do is to think about the metrics so there's a trick i want to work with the metrics the metrics has to be significantly bigger than the system so currently our system is 55 by 72 by 35 so i'm going to create a really big system so something super big just much bigger than the system so we could start just create a big system in this axis and then and then this could be maybe 120 so let's just get a big big system something bigger because i want to immerse the whole system we are creating into that so we'll go back to the metrics go back to the assembly module so we can bring in the metrics and then see if the metrics encompasses everything so it sort of fills everything so what we can then do is just to move it around a bit just so that we can make sure that it's completely moved everything so i basically select the metrics so i'm going to move it maybe from here to there okay so it's sort of all right and then we could also do the same this other side so okay so what we're going to do with this in order to cover this end is i'm going to play a trick so if i press some I'm, I'm going to create some intersection between this point and that point so that point will be what we are going to use here so again i'll select this and then i'm going to move it from here to there okay so everything is enclosed so the metrics is definitely enclosed so if we look here so you can see everything is right in the middle it's really important that you do this because if you don't do this then the merging of pressure will be difficult so we need to kind of make sure the metrics encloses everything don't worry at the end we're going to trim out the system but this is an essential step in the process so once we've created all that then we can now create what i call you know the three the orthogonal because it's an orthogonal system that we're working with continue and then select everything and click okay so now hopefully this operation will operate go very well and mess the system in place so there's no conflict between what the matrix is doing and all that okay so the first thing we need to do is to switch it to something like section just to have a better view of where things are inside then in that same part module we select this section so i could then click on this and click here okay so i could see what i'm trying to do so basically i need to trim off on those edges so the easiest way to try and do this is to say okay i'll put a construction line and then i'll really 
so if we zoom in very closely and you press right on there okay and then you come back all the way to this other side and you do the same so that's a construction line that defines that space and then we'll do the same on this other side so you basically make sure you get really close to the system so you can get the edges looking correctly so so that looks fine and then you know you can do a horizontal one whichever way you want that doesn't really matter I mean the essence of trying to do that I want to then use that as my reference to trim so the internal bit I can start from here and then go there and then make sure I enclose everything in the system and then click done okay so if we look at what's happening so it's trying to trim through across and then that basically is the first stage of the trimming operation so we've trimmed on that face so we then need to try a different face so we need to trim on this axis as well so how are we going to do that so again we start here click click there click here so then in order to make sure that everything is correct the way again i like to use those construction lines where this time around we have these anchor points to help us okay and then we've got the same anchor points on that side and anchor points on this side so clearly the intersection points appear so we click here start from there go to where the intersection on this other point appears this is fine and then we'll get a big box filling everything and then click done all right so again if i look at it so you see okay what it's doing and then it's going to cut through the whole system and then we basically have our metrics our bi-directional composite the way we want and then we can go back to path default and this is fine okay so there's a few things that we're going to do so right away i'm going to create some materials here so this I, i'll call it my carbon fiber so this is fine and this carbon fiber will have sections so i've got my binder section because carbon fiber is an autotropic material so we've got the binder so we've got the weft section made of the same material as well and then we've got the warp section again made of the same material as well because they're all going to be carbon fiber but then i have to make my epoxy which will be what the metrics will be so i'm not going to put any properties there for now so i'm going to call this my metrics section so this metrics section would have to be the epoxy system now that we've created the materials the next thing we're going to do is to create the next section assignment so i select section assignment here on tick there and then select just the region around here which is where the metrics is okay and then make that my metrics okay so it does look correct so if i click there and then change this to cells then i can select the metrics and click done so that goes away leaving other components in there so the next thing we need to do here is probably to do a section assignment for the binder so the binders are clearly reviewed so i click there click here click here and click there so those are my binders and that binder will be the binder section okay so if we go back to the material module so clearly the binder is also revealed there so if i go back and say okay my binder section i want to remove selected so the binder is gone so now we know that the ones that are running vertical this way in the z direction are the web and these ones are that so if we then want to deal with the y x so this is basically this so we want to deal with the system here so i'll take our perspective so now that means i can assign those ones there so i'll do section assignment and then basically select that press down shift select this other bit select that bit select that bit okay and then click done so that will be my weft section okay so if we go back into this window so that weft i can tell it to remove it leaving only the warp system so i can now select all of this warp so section assignment or the warp and the warp system would be assigned appropriately okay then we can tell it to resume and replace everything okay so everything is fine take out restore to perspectives and then we have a system looking good so we might as well switch the section and then it looks like what we expect at the beginning so this is how you create the virtual domain of the system the next thing you can then think about here will be to assign material properties to this thing of which the material orientation of the binders and the web and the warp is important so if you want to do that this is the video to use to do that if you want to just model other composite materials not necessarily a textile this is a playlist about composite that will be helpful to you thank you for your interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next video bye bye